In this following tutorial, we will be focusing on modeling a enclosed studio. And the, the inspiration that I'm getting is there's another studio out there that does it. I won't mention any names to avoid any legal issues. But uh, the, the concept is also from fashion photography or product photography. And here's an example of something. Uh, this is shot by Epic Mind. It's a really, really well-known and very high-quality uh, photography studio. But the idea is something like this. We have a solid ground, and then we are able to have a hot spot in the background. So the idea is we will model a studio that's flat, and then we'll have a big drop, and then we'll have the cycle wall that goes around it. And this will allow us to want to put light sources underneath it and project it on the wall to have a hot spot. And then it'll also be a psych wall studio. So here I have a Lambo. Now this car is to scale, so this allows me to make sure once I create the environment, I could put in other models, whether it's CAD models or game models, whatever you want to do. That way, as long as it's proportionally scaled, it's going to fit just right. And you could always use this studio as your hero go-to guide. So the first thing I want to do is set up a camera. And since I'm modeling this just based on visually what I think looks good, there's not really any uh, dimensions that I'm going to go by. So here's my car. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a rectangle. And this is going to be our ground plane, which is this surface right here that the vehicle or product whatever sits on. So because everything is zeroed out in x, y, z coordinates, as long as I do it like this, 0, 0, it's going to be perfect. So this is where the non-destructive workflow concept comes in. So let's say we want it to be something like this, nice and big, maybe a little more square like that. All right. So now I want to round off my edges to uh, have a nice rounded corner. So that way, if we are rendering and you see the, uh, the corner of the studio, the light is just going to nicely float around it instead of having a sharp line. Now you could have either or because this is non-destructive, you could also have a sharp line. It's whatever you want. So now what, uh, what we're going to do here is add an extrude modifier. And this is just going to extrude it down like so. And again, because I want to kind of keep it physically accurate, I'm just going to extrude it, let's say negative 10 feet. So we're going to have it really go far down. Now, what I want to do now is create a gap between the wall and the psych wall. So that way I could add a light source behind us, kind of like this. So that way you don't see the light, but it hits the wall. Now to do this, there's going to be two different ways. Is one, you could model a uh, plane, bend it, warp it, whatever. Or two, if we want to try to keep this whole non-destructive workflow concept, what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this shape, like so, and I'm going to delete this extrude. So now if we go to the top view, we have our shape. And now what I'm going to do is just eyeball the distance. So let's see, something like that something like that. So this gives us enough room to put a soft box or whatever we want behind the car or behind the, uh, the hole. So now let's do this. What I want to do next is I'm just turning on snap mode and I'm just going to snap it from here to there. And let's see here. So four, so five feet, five feet, that's going to be my gap. And I'm working with the, uh, standard units with the United States, but you could work in meters, whatever it is. But all this is, is just a reference for me of making the, uh, the gap appropriate. So 6.5, 65, 66, 67, 68. So 67.5. There we go. And now I'm going to do 95, 96, 95.8, 95.7. So as you can see, this is good enough. It's not 100% perfect, but it, it'll work fine for me. And now the next thing that I'm going to do is move this square over here. And that's syncing up. Perfect. So I'm happy with how this is. And now what you want to, if you can, or if you want to do it, just see eyeball it and round it off. So that way this distance feels neutral as well. Just like that. I'm going to bump up the segments. Bump up the segments here. And so the next thing that I want to do is create the, uh, the fill, the psych wall fill. To do this, again, the whole idea is non-destructive. I'm just going to create, and I'm holding shift to drag a perfectly straight angle. Hold shift again. And so now we have our L shape. And now I'm just going to move this over here. Now on the path that represents our outer wall, I'm going to add a sweep modifier. 
Now I'm going to do use object selection and this guy. So now what I'm going to do is go to my front view and make sure that we are inverted like this. And now, as you can see, we could pick these options right here of where we want to place this object. So I want to place it on the inside. So now if we turn this on and off, as you can see, it's respecting this outer line. So now our uh, enclosed psych wall is over here. Now what I'll do is something like this. Probably center it. And here what we can do is take this line and just modify it. Something like this. So as you can see, when it's doing like a mirror effect. And the reason why is because we have this in the center. So if we do ground or height, it will respect this. So let's say we do it on the bottom. Then we move this all the way down. So there we go. And now if we just move the top, it respects the top. If we move the bottom, it should respect the bottom. Oh, no, because it's moving from the ground up. So it's always moving from down. So this is just the way I'm going to keep it. So all right, so I'm going to keep it something like this. And now I'm going to take a look at my perspective view. There we go. I like what I'm seeing here. And now this is where you control the height of the wall. And now here you could either build an overhang. You could add a square that represents a softbox overhang. What you can also do is if you want, click refine. Do something like this and add an overhead cove yourself. This is where the whole non-destructive concept comes in. Because you could now manipulate it at any time. And now if you want to do another thing, if you want to round off the bottom corners of this psych wall, just add an edit spline to this. So that way, again, we have a, a hierarchy, if you will, just like a muscle memory type of deal. There we go. And now if you want, you could either move this up. So as you can see, the psych wall bends, or you could leave it on the, bo on the bottom, kind of how I have it. And then again, what we'll do here is go to this guy and we could adjust its segments if I remember correctly. And if not, oh, I think it might be on this object. So interpolation, blah, 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 eight. There we go. See that? So this is adding our subdivision without adding any smooth modifier. So there we go. So now this is our easy method of creating a, uh, a studio that's enclosed from all angles. So now what we can do is apply white to this. There we go. So now we have our enclosed studio. And then the next thing would be to create the, uh, the same visual style, kind of like this. So now what I'll do here is something like that. Then I'll rotate the car around. So I have my car linked to this main helper. So I'll do a front three quarter view like this. Move it to the end of the psych wall, kind of like that. There we go. So now I have my wall. And this is going to allow my light to really just play off very nicely in the whole environment. And now, if I remember correctly, this car was uh, prepped with Corona. So I'll just switch my render engine to Corona real quick, just so I could kind of show you a... Uh, breakdown of how to create the light if you choose to go down that path. So we'll just turn on Corona Interactive and then my psych wall material is V-Ray, but it'll respect it. And now what we'll do is go to Corona Light, do a, uh, a rectangle light, put it down here in the, uh, the pit. And as you can see now, if we shine it up above, we get this beautiful hard line separating the wall and the studio. And that's the advantage of doing something like this with an enclosed studio, is you could have this beautiful glow with this hard line separation. So now if you wanted, you could add a, um, a wet floor to this psych wall environment because our ground is a whole separate object. So something like this. So I'm gonna do it like that. As you can see, now we're getting that uh, product photography look right there. And then the other thing is, if you remember when we were doing the uh, just the line adjustment, because again, we haven't collapsed anything, so this line is still our master for the, uh, the design of it all. So if we wanted to move this out like this, as you can see, we're going to start affecting the way the reflections are on the car. 
So we could move it down. You can have a lot of fun with this based on how you want to design the environment. But again, that's the whole perk of a non-destructive workflow is at any point, and I'm going to undo this before we did that. You could adjust the height and you could also adjust the ground. So you could bring it up, bring it down, whatever you want. And at the end of the day, it's all simple. So let's say you want to make this studio even wider. Just six. change that out. Go back to this rectangle and change that out. As you can see, the specs respect each other. Everything gets modified automatically as long as you're not collapsing any of the hierarchy. And there you go. That's a simple tutorial for creating an enclosed studio environment.